Hey everybody, this video is called The Grain Offering, and tonight we're going to continue our pass-through study in the book of Leviticus. We're going to look at chapter 2, where we're going to be looking at the procedures for the grain offering. So let's look at verses 1 to 3 starting out. It says, When anyone offers a grain offering to the Lord, his offering shall be a fine flour, and he shall pour oil on it and put frankincense on it. And he shall bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests, one of whom shall take from his handful of fine flour and oil with all the frankincense. And the priest shall burn it as a memorial on the altar, an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. The rest of the grain offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is most holy of the offerings to the Lord made by fire. So the first variation consisted of uncooked flour, whose quality a fine peril the unblemished animal in the burnt offering. And a portion of this offering was used to support the priests. And a grain offering was added to the burnt offering, as you can also find in Numbers chapter 28. And just like the drink offering... And unlike the whole burnt offering, only a representative or memorial portion was given to the Lord. And unlike the burnt offering, the grain offering su supplied provisions for the priests. And the grain offering was fine flour mixed with oil and frankincense. And God allowed this offering as an expression for thanksgiving and not as an atonement of sin. So grain offering is no purpose to atone in sin but it's used to make an act of thanksgiving an expression of thanksgiving in verses 4 through 10 it says and if you bring an offering of grain offering baked in the oven it shall be unleavened cakes of fine flour mixed with oil or unleavened wafers anointed with oil but if your offering is a grain offering baked in a pan, it shall be a fine flour, unleavened, mixed with oil. You shall break it into pieces and pour oil on it. It is a grain offering. If your offering is a grain offering baked in a covered pan, it shall be made of fine flour with oil. You shall bring the grain offering that is made of these things to the Lord. And when it is presented to the priest, you shall bring it to the altar. Then the priest shall take from the grain offering a memorial portion and burn it on the altar. It is an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. And what is left of the grain offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. It is most holy of the offerings to the Lord made by fire. So the variation of grain offering involved bacon flour. And we see the containers used are an oven, a griddle, and a covered pan. And the anointed with oil is not speaking about a human appointment by God, but the preparation for the sacrifice and set apart as a memorial to the Lord. And the grain offering had to be prepared at home, and the covered pan worked at this time like what we would consider with the modern-day deep fryers. In verse 11, it says, No grain offering which you bring to the Lord shall be made with leaven, for you shall burn no leaven nor any honey in any offering to the Lord made by fire. So this applies to the offerings, all of which were to be burned on the altar. And both the yeast and honey were edible foods, but not to be used with a grain offering, as both could be induced fermentation and that would symbolize sin with leaven and leaven was prohibited because it was a type of sin and this leaven wasn't simply just yeast it was when they took a pinch of dough that was left over from a previous batch as in making of the sourdough bread and a little pinch of old lump could make a new whole, a whole new lump rise of dough and puff up and that's why in the New Testament it illustrates sin, the work of sin and pride as leaven, because it, it, it lumps up and rises and puffs up.
And the presence of a little can corrupt a large amount. And honey was a favorite sacrifice also to pagan deities. So that's why honey is listed here as a no-go item. In verse 12 it says, As for the offering of the first fruits, you shall offer them to the Lord, but they shall not be burned on the altar for a sweet aroma. So this applies to the offering that's about to come here in verses 14 through 16, was, which it was not to be burned on the altar, but rather roasted by the worshiper that was going into the tabernacle. And first fruits were to be offered, but not as other grain offerings. In verse 13, And every offering of your grain offering... You shall season with salt, and you shall not allow the salt of the covenant of your God to be lacking from the grain offering. With all your offerings, you shall offer salt. So this was included in all the offerings between verses 4 and 10 and verses 14 through 16. As salt was symbolic for stability and loyalty to the covenant. Uh, covenant. And salt speaks of purity and preservation and of expense. And every sacrifice that was offered to God should be pure and durn. And every sacrifice, as I said in Leviticus 1, should cost something. There should be a cost effect to it. And in ancient custom, salt also spoke of friendship. And it was established through the eating of salt. And God wanted every sacrifice to be a reminder of the relationship that he has with them. And you also see the idea of the covenant of salt repeated later in the book of Numbers chapter 18 verse 19 and 2 Chronicles 13 verse 5. In the long-awaited verses to finish the chapter 14 through 16 it says, If you offer a grain offering of your first fruits to the Lord, you shall offer the grain offering of your first fruits green heads of grain roasted on the fire grain beaten from full heads and you shall put oil on it and lay frankincense on it it is a grain offering then the priest shall burn the memorial portion part of its beaten grain and part of its oil with the, all the frankincense as an offering made by fire to the lord so the first fruits would be offered at the feast of the first fruits that you will look at later when we get to leviticus chapter 23 verses 19 through 14 and also the feast the feast of weeks in leviticus chapter 23 verse 15 through 22 and frankincense was a gum ricin that had a strong soothing odor and it was used for incense inside the tabernacle sacrifices as exodus 30 verse 34 states but to wrap up here we looked at the procedure on how grain offerings were to take place in the preservation. And we looked at different types of grain offerings, and we looked at the special instructions regarding the grain offerings as the addition of leaven or honey was prohibited. And we covered what leaven is and how we talked about how leaven is used to compare sin being puffed up. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 and 7, this says, Your glory is not good. Do you know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Therefore purge out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, since you are truly are unleavened. For indeed Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. And leaven represents the presence of sin. And we looked at the offering wrapping up chapter 2 of the first fruits and how each grain offering must include salt. And the chapter ends with the procedure for a grain offering of first fruits. And that's going to wrap up this uh, chapter. We'll be back on Friday where we're going to look at chapter 3 of Leviticus. So hope you join in for that and we'll see you on Friday which I believe it's the peace offerings chapter. So we'll talk about peace offering. All right, have a good rest of your week.